Well, futures are in the red with investors digesting the fresh econ data out this morning. The U.S. economy growing at a slower pace in the first quarter than initially reported, reflecting softer than expected consumer spending. GDP rising 1.3 percent annualized in the first three months of the year. That is below, slightly below the previous estimate. Now, for more on this, we want to bring in Sam Stovall. He is CFRA's research chief investment strategist is here. And Sam, when you take a look at the market reaction right now, not so much in the equity markets, but really what we're seeing in the bond markets here this morning because we have treasury prices here pushing higher yields falling on the heels of this reading. So I'm curious how you're looking at this latest data print and exactly what this means in terms of how this factors into the Fed's timeline for a potential rate cut. Well, good morning, Sean. Uh, I think it's just one of several factors and probably least important one compared with tomorrow's PCE report. Uh, but certainly it was a bit of a uh, encouragement in that Q1 GDP growth came in uh, slower than was originally estimated. Uh, of course, there's still the, the forecast from uh, GDP now, Atlanta Fed, uh, looking for greater than 3% growth in the second quarter. Uh, so I think we'll have to wait to see what uh, transpires for the uh, entire quarter. But I think tomorrow's PCE will be more important than this GDP report. Sam, I'm focusing in on some of the areas where there were downward revisions here, whether that be the price index for gross domestic purchases uh, or that be the current dollar personal income and then another one, profits from current production. Wh which of these is kind of most significant or has an outsized impact on where we did see GDP come in versus the previous estimates? Well, I think downward rev revisions uh, to these growth areas uh, are important across all three. Certainly, whatever has to do with the consumer is the, the most important, in my opinion, since the consumer represents about 30, uh, 70% of the overall economy and also is very influential when it comes to inflationary readings. Uh, but we also know that these uh, data are uh, up subject to revision. There will be a third revision before all is said and done. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would look uh, more toward regular consumer confidence as well as the employment data when it comes out uh, a, fr a week from Friday. So Sam, how does all this factor into your investment strategy? When I mean, we're talking about really what is going to be driving the equity markets in the near term, is it now all about the Fed because of where we are within the uh, earnings cycle? Yes, it is. Uh, AI is driving tech uh, and uh, the semiconductors, but EI, earnings and inflation, are driving the market. And now, as you just said, with Q1 earnings essentially completed and we're waiting uh, for forecasts for Q2, the focus is entirely on the Fed and inflationary readings. We think at the earliest the Fed will be cutting rates in September. Uh, we had been saying for a while that we thought we'd get two cuts this year, September and December. But I would tend to say that we are becoming less confident about the start in September. So certainly a concern that investors have to deal with right now. Sam, what about the notion of a potential rate hike? Is that something that you think at all is a possibility at this point? Uh, well, possibility, but certainly not a likelihood. It might be back on the table, but it's pretty far back on the table, if you will. Uh, so, I mean, we have to remember what Fed Chair Powell said, highly unlikely uh, about a rate hike. But certainly with the 10-year yield climbing, uh, with commodity prices rising, uh, with economic data remaining resilient, uh, I, I think it's at least the risk is back on the table, though remote. Where does risk also lead to any rotation for investors who are trying to figure out, once we do see the Fed start its cutting cycle, how they should be positioned? Well, right now, I mean, we're seeing rotation since the uh, the Dow hit 40,000 on May 17th. Really, there has been no place to hide except tech and communication services, uh, whereas if it's not AI related, it was in the red. Uh, but historically, when the Fed does start to cut interest rates, that tends to benefit stocks, uh, tends to benefit large and small cap stocks, tends to benefit the uh, the, the interest sensitive areas like financials and real estate, as well as the more growth oriented groups pushing the defensives like consumer staples, health care uh, off to the sidelines. So uh, I would tend to say that depending on when the Fed does start to cut interest rates, then I think we could be seeing uh, risk on once again. 
Sam, when you take a look at the action that's played out since NVIDIA's earnings print just last week, we've seen an outperformance in NVIDIA's stock. Yet when you take a look at the broader market, when you take a look at the S&P, we haven't necessarily seen uh, that euphoria follow suit. What does this signal to you? And is this kind of divergence that we're starting to see between NVIDIA and the performance of the rest of the market, is that worrisome at all to you? Yes, I think it is, uh, because when you look to, as I had mentioned before, since the uh, recent high, uh, at least for the Dow above 40,000, uh, the best performing group was technology up 4.3% uh, and the S&P 500, while the market itself was negative, and all other sectors except communication services were in the red, even the defensive areas. And when you look to the best performing sub-industries, not surprisingly, semiconductors was up 14%. Uh, good reason that uh, expectations are that this group will post a 45% increase in earnings this year, 35% gain next year. But also those AI tagalongs like heavy equipment, heavy electrical equipment that are uh, meant to power uh, the AI areas. Also the independent power producers, uh, all of which were up by 7% or more. So I, I would tend to say that that if we don't get a, a broadening of participation once again, uh, then that we could be uh, retesting the low that we saw on April 19th. Sam Stovall, CFRA Research Chief Investment Strategist. Thanks so much for breaking this down with us and uh, giving your perspective here ahead of today's opening bell, Sam. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks.